Hello, this is Jer. In the last episode, I showed you how to convert hot magma into power. And in this episode, we're going to do space travel. Build a rocket and send two dupes on a mission. The rocket I'm going to build is going to be fueled on carbon dioxide. So I'm building a pump at the bottom of the base and having a pipe go all the way to the top. I'm also having a sensor installed that's going to sense when there's carbon dioxide because I want the pump to shut off when there's no longer carbon dioxide in the area. So I'm bringing the pipe up from that pump all the way to the top of my base where my rocket's going to be. And I'm noticing I'm going to have a problem when I get to the top because it's extremely cold up there. Anything below minus 48 is going to freeze carbon dioxide in its pipe, breaking the pipe. The solution is to build a gas shutoff at the entrance of the cold area and then connect automation wire from that to a gas reservoir that's going to be constructed at the top. And the idea is when the gas reservoir starts to get full, let's say 50% or more, it'll tell that gas shutoff to stop, avoiding carbon dioxide from staying in the cool zone and ultimately freezing and breaking our pipes. Next, I'm replacing the gas mass with Atmo suits. And that's going to give us a huge advantage of space exploration as our duplicants are going to have access to more oxygen as they explore a new world. Next, I'm going to build a rocket platform. And a rocket platform is going to allow light to go through it, so I'm going to keep the solar panel that's underneath it, but I want a good clearance zone underneath it so when a rocket takes off, the heat from it is not going to hurt the solar panels. Now you're going to want a good supply of oxygen, not just for the Atmos suits, but also for the rockets themselves. And we're going to see that in a little bit. So I'm taking my oxygen system that I created in episode 29 and I'm merging it with the oxygen from my old oxygen system. So I'm going to get a really good supply of oxygen up. Once the gas reservoir is created, I'm going to set it to be 50-50. The longer your pipe going into this system through the cold zone, the lower that number should be. So if you have a longer pipe than me, maybe you want to use 25-25. So now it's time to construct a rocket. The first part is to build an engine. I'm building a carbon dioxide engine. On top of that, I'm putting an orbital cargo module that's going to supply us some material on our trip. On top of that, I'm building a trailblazer module. I'm building that out of lead that's going to be important in a step coming up. And finally, I'm putting on a solo safe air nose cone. So once I've got that, then I can connect my carbon dioxide line into the engine. I also want to provide oxygen to my rocket. So I'm building an oxygen line up to the rocket and providing that to the input of the solo safe air. I'll need a way for my dupes actually to get up to the top of the rocket. So I'm building in a ladder next to the platform. Also want to bring water into my rocket. So I'm going to have the same problems taking that through pipes in the cold zone where it'll freeze. So I'm building the same setup I had for the carbon dioxide where I've got a shutoff on the input of the cold and automation wire with the liquid reservoir telling it to stop when there's enough water that's been received. This step is important. I'm specifying what material to take as cargo. And I'm going to choose a refined metal. Just make sure to use the exact same refined metal that you created your trailblazer out of. In my case, that was lead. So I'm specifying 1600 kilograms of lead to put in there. So click on the solo safe air, hit view interior. Now it's time to design the inside of a rocket. So I'm going to create a couple of mesh tiles to be able to store stuff in the higher portions and have one tile act as a step up to be able to get up there. So I'm wrapping next a pipe all the way around. So this is gonna be oxygen that's gonna be coming into the rocket and having that delivered into a vent. Now I'm noticing that they've changed the game very recently where you can no longer build over two tiles of the door. So I'm having to modify my plan a little bit. So I'm gonna build a lavatory for my dupes to be able to use while they're traveling. Next, I'm going to build a pipe that's going to connect the water that's going to go into this. But I'm going to wrap it around the rocket as long as possible, effectively storing my water in the system. Now, I'm not going to be able to go through the door anymore, so I'm making a little adjustment there. I'm also going to want to leave room for a carbon skimmer so I can remove some of the carbon dioxide in the future. That's going to have an input at the bottom left and an output of polluted water in the top right. So I'm going to connect where the polluted water would come out of that and connect that to the output of the rocket. The nice thing is when they're traveling, all the polluted water will just go into space. 
So now I want to build an oxygen diffuser and I'm realizing the gas vents in the way so I'm just having that raised a little bit so I can get that in there. Once I get the oxygen diffuser there next to that I'm going to create a bin and I'm going to get a little bit of copper to be stored in there at least 400 kilograms worth. Then I'm going to do some wiring that's going to connect a future battery, the oxygen diffuser and a manual generator that I'm going to build once I'm in space. So I'm making the storage bin have the highest priority build, so that's going to be created. I'm going to get them to load that with the copper that I mentioned earlier. And once that's full, I'm going to throw the copper on the ground and have them put in as much algae as they can into a single build. And that's going to be good for quite a few missions going forward. Next, I'm going to have a food storage put in there. I'm going to fill that with makaru and nutrition bars and the reason for that is they don't go bad i want as much food in here as possible that's not going to go bad over time once the dupes have finished storing as much algae in a single bin i'm having that bin destroyed and then replacing that with this small battery that's going to fit in there so while we wait for all the material to go into my rocket let me show you what's going to happen when i get more than half a tank of water in here so once that happens the, I have the settings of 50-50, which means above that, the false automation is going to turn on, triggering the liquid shutoff to a stop, and we're going to prevent water from stopping in that cold zone and then freezing in our pipes, breaking them. Almost forgot this step. I want to store a thousand kilograms of glass, and the reason for that is I want to be able to build solar panels in the world that we land in, just freeing up the dupes from having to use the man's generator so much. So now that I've got glass and food inside my rocket, I want to specify a location to go to. So I'm going to click on the solo safe area and hit change next to destination. Now you can't go to a planetoid that doesn't have a platform, but you can go next to it. And that's what we're going to do on this mission. So now you need to specify your crew. So I'm going to hit change crew. I already put two crew members through the skill scrubbers. I don't want them to get stressed out while they're traveling. One of them is going to have the piloting skills. In this case, this is engineer. I'm going to click on crew, which means you're telling the crew to go in and anyone else to go out. And once they are in there, then I'm going to click on it again and hit begin launch sequence. And that's going to tell the actual rocket to take off. So here is the first rocket taking off on this base. You can see it's producing heat underneath it and carbon dioxide. It hasn't gone down as far as I expected, which is uh, fine. Perhaps didn't need as much clearance for those solar panels. The very first thing I want you to do as soon as that rocket takes off is click on the rocket. You'll find that under the planetoid menu in the top right. I want you to take off their suits. Don't worry, they're not going to be naked. That's just their Atmos suits. Because I don't want to waste the oxygen that's in them. Because we'll want that once we land. Then delete the food storage. Replace that with a manual generator. And that's going to turn the oxygen diffuser on. But we've got a lot of time to do that because there's lots of oxygen stored in those pipes. It is just a few seconds until the rocket arrives at our location. At this point, I recommend you do a save. And then once you do that, go inside the rocket. First step is to deploy the cargo. That's 1,600 kilograms of refined metal. That's going to push that onto this planetoid. And we're going to use that very soon. So the dupe that's going to land, I'm going to get them to put on their Atmos suit. I'm going to click on the control station. And under Trailblazer, I'm selecting that dupe and hitting deploy. You're going to need to choose location to land. Choose a spot that's close to two units of refined metal that have landed. An important tip, make sure you deploy them when they're in the early stages of their work schedule. First thing I'll do is I'm going to destroy the Trailblazer. That's going to give me a little bit of refined metal. I'm going to open up two of the payloads. And that will give me enough metal to build a platform so that the other dupe that's flying up will be able to land. Next to the rocket platform, don't forget to build a little ladder to be able to get in there with the rocket. Once the rocket platform exists, go to the control panel in the spaceship, change the location, select the planetoid, and you'll be able to land. And there we have it. So we've got two dupes that landed on a planetoid. They have a rocket available. They've got food, oxygen, and laboratory. Quick note on laboratory, the output of the polluted water is going to be blocked. You'll easily be able to fix that by building a small little pipe with a liquid vent out here. Other than that, we are set to do some exploring, which I'm not going to do in this episode, but that will be for another day. Tomorrow they're supposed to do an update of the game, so my next video may be on that. Whatever it is, I hope to see you there. Till then, Jared.